Welcome back to another Inside the Show. We are one week closer to 22. We got more news to go over with the Nintendo Switch feature. Hey, we even got LB Show 21 news here. Cougs, welcome in, everyone. Hope you guys had a good week. And let's start with the MLB 21 news. We actually got MLB 21 news on, what was it, February 20? What was that, Friday? 26 or something? I don't even know. 26. And they dropped two, like, bombshells of players with finest Aaron Judge and finest Vladdy Jr. How come this is going to come sooner here, Cooks? <sighs> Your guess is as good as mine, Scuffy. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I will say this is these are cards that will kind of get people excited. We'll get people oh, ready to play yeah. MLB 21 again. You know, maybe they have one more of these drops ready or in their back pocket before the new game, because this is stuff that gets people excited. Not Shane Victorino and Jonathan Lucroy. I still don't know what that was. <laughs> I, I, I that one still blows my mind. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But either way, it, it's funny because of the way you said it. it did bring. I mean, if you look at at least the consecration side things. A lot of people were pumped up. Everyone was streaming the event, trying to get these cards. That Vladdy Jr. card, man, I don't even know where, you, where would you even rank these cards with the finest cards that we have right now. I mean, that that Vladdy Jr. just screams out to me like a top tier, maybe top five type of card that you could get right now. It's definitely, it's crazy because that's his second 99 card that we mm -hmm. got this year with the all-star version. And I don't remember last time we actually got like, 299s of the same player from the same year. You get what I'm saying? Like from the same season. Well, Otani this year. Otani. Yeah. Other oh, than yeah. Otani. Otani. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I just forget the pre order Otani and then now Vladdy Jr. I, I so feel the like second there was player. somebody else. Wasn't there somebody else this year? Was it? Oh, no. I was thinking Trey Turner, but his all star card was a 98, not a 99. Yeah. It was a 98. I mean, so. kind of. Oh, you power one, you get it to 99. Basically, yeah. Really. So, yeah. uh, but no, but, it's, it's kind of crazy that we're talking about MLB 21 content. We're going to talk about like the feature premieres coming up or anything, but the fact that we're starting this show with content from 21 is kind of wild. So props to SDS for making this weekend kind of interesting for 21. I got to give him props there. Oh yeah. Without doubt. It, it gets people, like you say, it gets people pl back playing, get them a little bit more prep because after a tech test, like. I was kind of like, what do I do now? I kind of like, do I just still play MLB show 21 just casually into tw uh, 22? Like I didn't have that urge really mm -hmm. for me. And then seeing those cars, of course, I'm going to want to play, even though I don't play event, I'm definitely going to want to try them out, whether it's BR or something like towards that matter and see how those cars play. Because I, I love both those players to play in the game with Vladdy and Aaron judge. Um, but it just gave that a little bit more excitement. I like when they keep on pushing content until the new game comes out. And they did that, I believe, was it 19 to 20? Mm hmm But we really didn't see it since then, though. Like, we got Andrew Jones, I think, in 19. That was the last card that we got before 20 hit. And that came, like, around this time as well. But from going to 20 to 21, I don't remember anything significantly that dropped before the game dropped for 21, right? Yeah, not not that I can remember. Um, the, the past two years, they've kind of notoriously stopped content pretty mm -hmm. early. Um, but yeah, no, there was, I, I think you're right. I think it was 19 to 20, I want to say, yep. uh, that had, you know, decent content pretty much until the launch of the next game. And the thing is, is like, you know, they're releasing like two cards at a time like this. You got Vladdy. And you got Judge. In the previous event, I think there was like Killebrew and like Ron Guidry or something like Heath that. Bell. Heath Bell. I think Heath Bell yeah. might have been in there or something like that. But it's like, what you know, there's still a million cards that they could release from this game. So it's like, why why stop it too? Just why, yeah. why not four event rewards? That keeps people playing the event longer. Like, I don't know. So I, I'm not going to, you know, at the end of the day, it is it is the end of February. It's not the end of the world if, if we don't get more cards. But mm. um. Yeah, it's just it's it's cool that we actually get to talk a little bit about the game that we have in our hands and not the game that we're waiting for. So, yeah, and yeah, good stuff. Know, it is good stuff. It's a good way to transition from the tech test into back to twenty one, and be actually like, okay, there's something to do now. Um, yeah, I just want more. Like you said, if they're going to do it now, like where's the ninety nine Kirby? Where's the ninety nine Andrew Jones again? They're 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 doing my where's boy my dirty Cedric? with Andrew Jones. Where's my Cedric? 
I think that's not until next year, but I can't oh. wait for that 30 for 30 mile song, Cardi. <laughs> uh, I swear, legit, I he's going to be the, like, uh, each year, I, I think I mentioned this off podcast um, to you, but we'll say it now. Like, each year, there's, there's one player that just does it for me. Like, just doesn't matter what card it is mm-hmm. of theirs. It just performs. Um, last year, it was, uh, was it Tio last year? I think it was last year. Was Tio, you, uh, you liked Tio. Yeah, Tio last year was for me, and this year was Cedric, man. And I need to get myself an Orioles jersey of Cedric Mullins. Just, you know, each year just represent. And I became a fan of him as well. And um, But, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for that 30 for 30, man. Oh, yeah, gonna, that card's going to be sick. And technically, it could be 30, 30, 30. Because he 30, had 30, 30 doubles, 30 homers, oh. 30 steals. Jeez. I think it was, well, wasn't it? It might have been 40 doubles. 30 homers, 30 steals, something like Could that. Have been. I, I don't know offhand. Yeah. But either way. So uh, we'll see when that time comes, whether it is maybe they do something before the game drops. Hey, Coos, we are basically, this is going to drop tomorrow. We're basically 30 days away. Uh, dude, it's, it always kind of does that. It feels so far away, but it it's just kind of creeps up. I'm telling you, this year feels much quicker. I don't know. It, maybe it's, I, I, Sound like a broken record now, but this year feels so much quicker. Maybe because I actually have stuff planned this month and it's just going to make it go quicker. Or I, I don't know, but I, I feel like due time, we're going to be sitting here at this exact time and be like, yo, it comes out this week. Yeah. And like you said, I'm with you. I've had so much going on, you know, like like birthdays and anniversaries and holidays. And this next month, you know, I've got like a Disneyland trip planned. I've <laughs> That's got funny. A- I do too. <laughs> You're going to Disney? I'm going to Disney in Florida. You're going to Disney oh, in California. Oh, <laughs> man. That would have been a stick. That would have been a nice way to link up. But yeah, oh, I mean, wow. like, I got stuff to look forward through or look forward to throughout the month of March. So once again, it it just kind of creeps up, man. It just kind of gets here quicker than you think. Last year, it, the game did come out two weeks later than it's coming out this year. So it felt slightly longer to me. But still, that one kind of crept up, too. So, hey, man, we're right there. Hang in there, everybody. We got, like, a month left. And then hopefully we have some good content to get after day one. And hopefully the rest of these feature premieres are good, man. It's, it's time to get excited. It is time to get excited. And let's go into the feature premiere that we got last week. And that was Nintendo switch. We kind of talked about the Nintendo switch um, from the tech test when um, it dropped and talked a little bit about this time around, they dropped a whole feature about it. It's pretty much what we already kind of knew. However, there was a big, thing that looked different and that was actual the gameplay a little bit like they indicated they are shooting for 30 fps and shooting for that to be on the launch date remember on and they made the point of when it's docked and handheld here because um when it's handheld they decrease the graphical performance just like any other game and when it's docked in it should be a little bit better but before we get to the feature did you did you end up playing with nintendo switch on the tech test online or just in general i was able to get yo you did yeah i I was able to get like you know a little bit of custom practice in but every time i tried to search for a game i I was getting challenge failed or you know getting kicked out of the thing or whatever so i didn't get any online gameplay but uh what what was your experience like so it's it's funny because i think going into it i had low expectations just because i did it on like I think the Tuesday. So it stopped on the Wednesday. I did it on the Tuesday at night. I was just chilling on my couch and I, I had low expectations just from seeing the feedback that you see on social media about it and just like, Oh God, really? I mean, but I think with me having low expectation, it played just fine for me. I mean, you do notice the 30 FPS you, and I knew that even before the game dropped, that's, that's how it's going to be. It's not going to be the 60 FPS new uh, gen type of console feel it's going to be a switch game and legit i had fun with it i played a couple of br games I actually it, i will say the first perfect perfect you do get on the switch feels really nice yeah um I, and i always remember it was juan soto for me in yankee stadium hit an upper decker i was just like, okay um but it's definitely a game that's playable i will definitely do my moments on there i'll bef- definitely offline grinding and you know what? If I'm really don't feel like getting up and going to my desk, I'll do some BR runs because 
end it all. If I lose that BR run, it's just another redraft I'm going to yeah. do. So. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I mean, once again, like you said, that's kind of all you really all you really need is just for the game to like run. If we, if we're not going to use it for any sort of high intensity games, like a 12 and OBR game or like a, a world series game or something like that, as long as the game just runs, you should be able to get your moments done. your offline grinding yeah. um, for people out there. It might be a fun thing to take it on the go and do some franchise or March to October or whatever, stuff like that. That's all going to be great for the game. Um, and the fact that they made it very clear that the build that we played with in the tech test was, I think they said well over two weeks old and that when the game actually drops, it is going to be more optimized and it is going to be ready to go on that console should be the word should, should be pretty. Uh, what, what's the, I, I can't even think of the right word. It, it should just make people feel less or more at ease with their purchase because I feel like a lot of people when they played in the tech test on the Nintendo Switch, uh, they were not impressed with what they saw. Um, so, you know, I, and, and I feel like the tech test was just more of making sure the game just just ran, you know, more than more than optimizing the entire performance of the game and making sure the frame rate was perfect and stuff like that. Just making sure the game ran because they also clarified that this is a unique build of the game. You know, you've got the Xbox Series X and S, you've got the PlayStation 5 build of the game, you've got the other consoles. The Nintendo Switch build is its own version of MLB The Show 22, so they have to make sure that it runs, which I, in my in my opinion, is just kind of what they were going for. Um, but the fact that they made it very clear that the game should run smoother on launch should make a lot of people happy and a lot of people more comfortable with their purchase. Oh, 100%. I mean, it definitely cleared up a lot of questions that a lot of people had and i think that was the biggest one and they showed right from the start i mean if you haven't checked it out the feature is on their uh youtube and it's all all the gameplay that you see is from nintendo switch and i i'm i'm now can't wait until i have to switch and hopefully that will be season actually starts on time we'll find out <laughs> maybe well, if you're maybe to maybe tomorrow, tonight when we're recording, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, it's well, I it does I, just it just I know it does kind of seem like they are they're really trying today. I know today is like the yeah. deadline, and but, obviously know, we 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 can have a whole podcast on this, even though it, we're about uh, and we would show, but they had this whole what last two months, and now they're aggressively. It just takes it into like it's it's legit like how i was in college unfortunately when i had something to do like i always waited to the last minute and then when it's last minute all right the the fuel starts jumping up i get my paper done but i had all this time to do it before and that's what it feels like right now <laughs> yeah and it's giving those flashbacks that i don't like it but i'm hoping they could get something done and then <laughs> we don't even have to think about it because you know what it actually will help us out as a movie show players because we can't wait for 22 right if they get something done the next two, three weeks, it's going to be crazy. Absolutely. Spring training. A bonkers spring training, the free agency frenzy, trades are going to be up again. We don't know what's going to happen after this. It's something that we've never seen happen before in baseball. So I'm very curious. I'm hoping. I'm trying to be optimistic about it. It's it, Even for someone like me being like, I'm usually very optimistic. I, I, I was... Yeah, over the weekend, I was like on the other fence. I was like, "Oh God, the yeah. Mets fan in me is the only thing that I'm not optimistic about with the Mets." But the Mets fan in me is starting thinking about, "Oh God, is this going to be like a year thing?" And <laughs> um, but we'll see. They're still yeah. going as I, we speak. Just we're just trying to be hopeful, and you know, yeah. I, I, yeah, I really don't want to have games missed just because you know we had the the 2020 season only be 60 games, and then. Last season, there were some, the last season was, was a full 162 with a full playoff and everything, but now we're in danger of having another, uh, you know, another weird season. I just, I just want baseball back. I want to be able to enjoy games. I want to be excited about what's coming out in the game. I don't, you know, if they have to recycle player of the month content, oh, well, but I, I just want baseball back more than anything, man. I just want something to watch something to enjoy every night. And, 
you know, I think I think I speak for everybody in saying that we we just want the game back, dude. Like all these negotiations are are annoying. They're mm-hmm. exhausting to to keep up with the updates on it. We just want the game back, man. Exactly. Now let's just say they do get the lockout, and it's it within a month in the season. I like this tweet that I saw during the week from uh, Nazi Poo, who's another content creator. You could sh- check him out on pretty much all social media. Um, he had this tweet. What with the lockout? Uh, extends into the season and we show focus on minor league content like a minor league um player a month program or things like that i i, I didn't even see that tweet but that's a great idea i feel like they right? should be doing that regardless yeah i mean especially now you have the future stars you have the prospect series um that'd be pretty dope just imagine like now they had like you know how college players could have rights now just imagine what we're seeing from Tommy white from the NC mm. state doing right now with nine home runs in eight games. Imagine having his type, like they had college players as well. That'd be crazy. I, I know that will never happen, but just imagine that like just into a replacement of not having MLB will be season, having his type of card with nine home runs in eight games here. Cougs. It's just. That'd be great. Would- <laughs> and and dude, honestly, they don't even have to go full out with like minor league player of the month. So they don't got to make an entire program, but maybe like the first two rewards you get in like the, the monthly awards program are just like two minor league guys. Cause you know, I don't know if you want to have these minor league guys necessarily be better overalls than dudes that did have a good month in the big leagues. Yeah. But I think if you make like the first two cards or just add two more cards that show off those minor league guys we have the, like you said we have the full minor rosters we have future stars cards we have prospect cards you might as well i mean it's a way to capitalize on that content and they've gotten i, I know for a fact they've had so many people say i've literally gotten invested in players just because yeah. of using their future stars card or their prospect card in diamond dynasty it's now made me follow their careers and if you get some guys that are shining at the triple a double a whatever level I mean, dude, it's just another avenue to help grow the game. Oh, exactly. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things come up the sleeve for TD and uh, content that way, which we'll get to later. Um, but to switch back to the Nintendo Switch feature, out of what you've seen and just final thoughts, is there anything else that you kind of want to see from the Nintendo Switch or basically what we saw from the future? That was it. And you get what you get kind of thing. I, I I don't really know what else they could have given. I mean, maybe they could have given more technical details, maybe some maybe some specs or maybe some some more, you know, in-depth look that at some of the advanced settings that are happening with the Switch. I don't yeah. know. Like I feel like the Switch is that thing where if you buy the game on PS5, if you buy the game on PS4 or Xbox, whatever, I feel like you kind of have a pretty good idea of what you're going to get. You're going to get a steady frame rate. You're going to get a good looking game. The Switch is that new thing where you're just not 100% sure. Um, And honestly, like I said, I don't really know what what more they could have shown because I feel like the game is going to speak for itself when you get your hands on it if you are getting it on the Switch. The game, they're saying it, they're, they're, fully expecting it to run 30 FPS and optimize for the switch. If it comes out and it's not like that, I, I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's not great. <laughs> that's not good yeah. at all. But I mean, it's just there. I don't really feel like there was much else. And I kind of feel like that's why the feature premiere was very repetitive and very, uh, it, it just felt, it, it just felt kind of tedious in a way yeah, that, yeah. cause you know, they talked about, oh, these are the modes that are on the Nintendo Switch. And then they did that little five to 10 minute Q&A thing where it's like, Ramon, what modes are on the Nintendo Switch? It's like, didn't we just, we, yeah. I feel like we just talked about that. At so least they, I prefer in franchise though, right? I mean, it's 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 there. You can click X on it. I so I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's past that, but it's there. Yeah, that, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, I agree. Um, there's not much more that we could talk about until we get the game. Um, and and I will say, if if you're still on the fence about getting the game on Nintendo Switch, just wait two or three days until mm-hmm. when the game comes out because there's going to be tons of uh, people on, on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, or whatever that do purchase the game. And if the game is in a very buggy state and the game isn't fully optimized then you can save your money. Like if you're, if you're not a hundred percent sold, just wait till the game comes out, wait a day or two, see what people are saying. And then 
make your purchase from there. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to lose out on a day of playing the game and you're not going to think about that day come November. Yeah, exactly. Uh, couldn't say it better. So we'll see when it comes. Uh, moving on, we did get a new legend from, well, actually not from the feature, but it's getting announced pretty much on their Twitter at 9 a.m. on Thursdays. We kind of already talked about this player because we guessed kind of right or credit to I won't be uh, the show card art. He guessed it. And then we mentioned it on the podcast last week. We get Kurt Gibson here, Coops. Yep. Um, Kurt Gibson. We kind of already touched on it. I mean, it, it, where is it on? Do we bring back the come on man segment where at a one out of five, <laughs> where, 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 where would we put Kurt Gibson right now? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I, I got to be honest, Scuffy. For me, he's like a one. <laughs> I, I I I just don't he, don't get me wrong I'm not, I just don't see he's a reveal right yeah true true he he's like that guy you drop like in in May where it's like ooh new legend almost like a Mike Hampton type of guy I mean he, yeah. look he's got an MVP season that's probably gonna be his end game card he's he's had some nice seasons in Detroit and stuff so he'll probably get like a gold breakout card from there yeah it's but it's just not. I don't know, as a reveal, as a guy that gets you excited, especially since we still don't really know what's happening with Randy. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like that is all that crazy. So I don't know, man. I know there's going to be some people out there that are going to be really excited about Kurt Gibson. The fact that they got the home run uh, celebration mo-capped into the game. That's cool. That, you know, that's always fun. Uh, But overall, I don't don't really know if that's going to sell a lot of copies for SDS. Yeah. Um, this is a type of legend where if you're a fan of the team he plays for, then you'd be happy for it. You get what I'm saying? Like if you're a Tigers or Dodgers fan, you might be happy for it. But for I I I don't know, they I think for the reveal of the day it was like, all right, the reveal, we got revealing because of the moment that you did in the historic moment that you did against uh Ecrecy in the World Series in eighty eight, which I understand, right? Um yep. but that, that could have been done during the year i guess i don't know he, he doesn't really i'm not gonna be like all right i need Kirk gibson day one type of thing um he's like a keith hernandez for other people i would feel like like for me i love keith because i'm a met fan he's going to get his number retired this year as a met but i don't think keith hernandez excites other people like say a cardinals or a mets fan will and i feel like Kirk gibson is in that same type of area Maybe yeah even similar to john oru too I was thinking, I was thinking more like a like a weaker version of like a Don Mattingly, yeah. In a way, okay. I know I know Mattingly is more first base, but he had some outfield time too. So and third base for that random game, and yeah, and third base, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so, I mean, I think we're kind of on the same page. Yeah, we are. And speaking of Randy, you know, there was another segue. They re-uploaded the gameplay trailer again. No, Randy, Xbox removed it and will be removed it. I don't know what's happening here. I I I don't know if he's in the game. I don't know if they they really personally. I still think he's a game. I think they probably didn't want to reveal him. I think he was going to probably be like the big legend, like to reveal maybe mid year. I don't know. I I just don't see how that can I'm slip sad. through the cracks. Like it just doesn't make yeah, sense. It doesn't make sense. And we we should, I feel like we have a up because yeah. <laughs> I feel like we There's should have a weekly big... segment. Where's Randy? Where's Randy? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we should do. We should actually for the video segment next time, um, wear like detective hats or something like that with mag- yeah. magnifying glass or I don't know. But yeah, uh, I don't know, man. If, it's, if it's... you're wondering where Randy is, guess what? We're wondering the same thing. We don't have the answers. I wish we did. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> it, it, you know what, Kirk Gibson, uh, with him being the legend as well, like. I don't know if the legend's going to be as big this year. I mean, who do we get? We got the cover boys, right? We got the Mauer. We got the um, Ryan Howard. Howard Probably. Is, I, I think we'll still get David Wright. Yes, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm still crossing my fingers on that. Um, but, yeah, we get those guys. I mean, they're, they are great legends. Let me get, And they are and we'll be the show legends at, at it. What I mean by being previously, and we loved using them in previous games. But they're still not like a Randy, right? Nope. Or I I know Randy, you say for a trailer type, but they're they're not they're like the mid not mid tier, but they're like the upper. It's like the very good of Hall of Fame, like the very yeah. good players. That's why I'm saying. And then you have the Hall of Fame players. 
I don't know. I, I'm maybe, maybe we're just too spoiled. I don't think it's spoiled. I think we're just we we've kind of come to expect a little bit more, a little bit more heat. I guess you can say because I mean you look at last year the the trailer reveal itself was Roberto Clemente, and then when we got the legend trailer, it was Pedro. So yeah. We got we got a, a great legend that a lot of people really wanted, myself included, in Roberto, and then we kind of got the the really big one that a lot of people have really wanted, which is Pedro. So, but now this year, since you removed Randy, it is it, if you throw him in the legend trailer at the very end, it doesn't have that same heavy hit like Pedro did, you know, because we. We already kind of saw Randy, but then we didn't see Randy, and now we're seeing it again. I don't know who they're going to throw at the end of the trailer unless it's like an A-Rod or something like that. I, I have no idea. It's I just want to know. I, I really think they need to say something. Yeah. Just so you know, for the people that probably purchased the game for Randy, I mean, we still might get something before the game drops. And speaking of legends, you know what's uh, interesting news today? Um, in the baseball world, not just about the lockout stuff, but with Derek Jeter stepping down from the CEO of the Marlins. Yep. Who knows? Now might be a chance to try to get his rights next year. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows, <laughs> man? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but let's get to what we're going to see for this week. So this week, remember, on Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, we have the new feature. And this feature is going to be the gameplay feature. So... We kind of already saw a couple new gameplay updates, um, whether that was the PCI anchor, the um, the sensitivity of the PCI as you go outside the zone, the par um, changes, the perfect throws to any base. I'm still, I still feel like there's there might be some things that we just didn't notice in the tech test that we might see in the gameplay feature. That's pretty much what I'm looking out for here, Cougs. Maybe minimal things. Yeah. Um, but I'm also curious on the data that they're going to bring from the tech test as well. That's why I'm interested. In. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will say yeah, the tech test data should be interesting. Um, I'm mainly looking at, I want to see like a, a lot more in depth, what they've done with pinpoint pitching. Mm -hmm. I want to see, you know, how they've, changed it to make it a little bit more difficult because I, I loved the addition of pinpoint pitching. I thought it was huge for the game, but by the end of the year, it, it was pretty apparent that pinpoint pitching was a little bit too easy. It was, you know, there was hardly any, hardly any downsides to missing your spot unless you like miss like crazy then, you know, but um, I'm curious to see how they've made pinpoint a little bit more difficult. I'm curious to see what they've done to pitcher stamina um for not only starting pitchers but relievers and i think we brought something up about br relievers in one of the recent episodes right no we didn't get to talk about it oh we didn't I wanted to do a br segment less I i'll talk about it after okay okay yeah um hitting hitting is always going to be something that no matter what they show in terms of the data or, or show in terms of their examples on the thing, hitting is never something I can judge until I get my hands on the game and get a lot of gameplay yeah. with it. Just because it's hitting is so situational. You know, it, it, every pitch that you see is going to be different. Every swing and your timing, everything is so like milliseconds apart. Like you're, you're, I mean, I'm sure they have, but you're hardly going to have any swings that are exactly the same based off the pitcher and the ballpark and your timing and all that stuff. Hitting is just so situational. It's really hard to make a judgment. Um, but I'm also curious to see if they have done anything. Um, I, I don't know if they will touch on it, but I feel like they might. I'm curious to see if they've changed any ratings or, or any attribute stuff around. Are they okay. going to, is hits per nine going to be different this year? Is hits per nine not going to be as big of a deal as it was last year is, you know, are, are there going to be other new attributes added? Are there going to be, are they going to talk about quirks and outlier and all this stuff? This is the feature premiere besides the Diamond Dynasty one that I'm the most excited for because I just really want to know what we can expect going into the launch of the game. Once yep. we get our hands on the game, we can make our own judgments on it and see how it feels, but at least what we can expect and what new things we can look out for when we're actually playing the game that we all spend so much time on 
this is what I'm really excited to see. So yeah, I, I, I all of those gameplay changes could be huge. Yeah, I agree. do agree. Um, and then going back to the stamina, especially with VR, I did see a major difference. Um, dude, I, it's, it's, it's kind of changing VR for me a little bit. I don't know how I'm going to draft. Um, still, but right now I play a lot of VR in tech test as, as I should. Um, just being VR fiend I am. Um, the stamina, stamina's biggest thing I've seen. Um, it will drop drastically, much more than it has in the past especially for levers. Um, I feel like the stamina attribute is going to be very big come when it's VR. I'm talking about you're going to see a lot more starters being used mm -hmm. um, because with relievers, there's been times, even with the three batter minimum, it gets they get to the red by the second batter. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to make the game. Usually sometimes when they get to red, I, I sometimes try and make the gambles, especially with the three batter minimum. And, and if I face a fourth pitcher, I was like, all right, I could get through one. Uh-uh, that's not the case anymore. I tried to do that multiple times on the tech test, and each time it just freaking killed me. Uh, the guy would absolutely just destroy the ball, hit the ball in the gap. Um, and, yeah. And another thing to go on top of that is you brought outlier. You see some pitchers that could reach up to 100 but don't have outlier. I'm very curious on how that correlation is going by. Um, there is still a lot of people that uh, players that do have outlier, but you still still see noticeable ones that didn't um, in the tech test. I believe Crochet doesn't have any more. Um, Chapman still has it, I believe. Yeah, I, I hardly even played any DD. I didn't even really. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think offhand. There was a lot of lower tier cards. Luis Garcia. Um, is going to be a stud if the attributes stay the same. But either way, going back to gameplay, um, those are the things I'm definitely going to look out for. I'm curious if there's anything else to the fielding besides the perfect throws that's been maybe just new animations, like the one that we discussed about the third base, mm -hmm. um, where he bobbled the ball and then was able to pivot the feet very quickly to get the guy to first base. I'm curious if there's any more animations like that that's going to affect the game or bring another type of skill gap to towards the game. Yeah, I, I just want to take it all in, absorb it, and then, of course, we'll be back here next week to talk about it, but this is definitely the next stream I'm excited for, just like you said before. So I I, yeah. I hope it goes longer than the typical 30 minutes. Give it a good representation of what's new coming to the game Yep, and go in depth with it. If you think there's a particular part, like even with the PCI Anchor, just – Oh yeah, they'll details. they'll touch on that. Yeah, I yeah, forgot about they that. They will. They they will definitely go with details of it. But sometimes we we gotta explain it where we're as a like you have to explain it as a video game. Sometimes, right? You can explain it as a baseball player, and we get what what say the PCI is. It's not the barrel of the bat. It's where the um, bat comes through the zone. I just feel like. Just need to elaborate a little bit more of what to expect for the outcomes, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just um, going offhand here. Yeah, no, I, it, you're right. I think they do need to go a little bit longer than the typical 30 minutes. I know that's kind of their sweet spot that they like to sit in. They don't like to overstay their welcome or whatever. But I, I do think that, you know, 99% um, of the complaints that get thrown SDS's way, I would say, are gameplay related. Obviously, you have your, mm. oh, like, my my card in my inventory disappeared or my buy order is gone. Like, stuff like that. It will always happen. But, um, you know, most of the clips and everything they get sent to them are gameplay related. Like, why is, why is this game freezing? Why is there a pop-up? Yep. Why is, you know, all this type of stuff. Like get out there, get in front of the community and say, these are the things that we've focused on. These are the things we've added. These are the things that we still want to get some data from. And just, just go out there and be transparent that, you know, gameplay is a huge focus for them and they want to get as much data as they can and they don't want to make unnecessary changes where they don't have to make them. But take your time and explain things. And with what you were saying about the PCI, I, I still, to this day, I will, I, I stand by what I say that I just, I don't necessarily think the hitting engine has huge flaws. 
I think the feedback is just so confusing yeah. to the average player. Nobody like, cause you have your swing timing, but then you have your late side of good when you're like just barely off of the perfect thing. You have your, your uh, middle PCIs that result in a pop-up. You have like all these different things. It's like, dude, you can, you can be a baseball game. And you, like I said, you can explain it in baseball terms and it, like explaining it like you're talking to a baseball player. But at the end of the day, we're playing a video game and not everybody has a huge baseball understanding or a huge baseball background. You got to explain it in a way that makes sense to where a person can say, oh, okay, I see what I did wrong on this swing. And granted, there are some things like that in MLB The Show where it's like, oh, okay, I see that my PCI was off the ball or I see that I was very late on that pitch. That's why this result happened and I didn't get a good result. But when you start having those good timing middle PCIs and you start having those weird results where you're getting pop-ups on pitch that you on pitches that you feel like should be, you know, driven hard up the middle or whatever, that's where people get frustrated and confused because the the feedback system just doesn't feel like it has that consistency. And like I said, I don't think it's necessarily the hitting engine. I just I think the feedback needs to be reworked to make it more easy to understand for the average player. You know, the, yep. the, I'm sure the top players and the people who play this game, you know, 10 hours a day, if there's any crazy people that do that nowadays, um, you know, they, they see more hitting results than anybody else. So they're going to always be able to adjust and they'll be able to make those, those uh, determinations of what's going on. But the average player who just hops on for a game or two and sees that their hitting results are just not making sense to them and are not being uh, conveyed in a way that is, you know, somewhat understandable is just not a good recipe. So I hope that obviously it's not going to happen in this year's game, but I hope for maybe 23 or 24, if it takes them a few years to do it, I hope they rework the feedback system just completely. I hope that the PCI has a better tutorial. I hope there's a better onboarding process at some point that explains what exactly zone hitting is all these type of things, because right now I just don't think that a lot of people fully understand or fully grasp the concept of it. I mean, you saw what they did with the statement creator this year, right? With mm -hmm. the tutorials. Yeah. And be able to go through that. That's something I would like to see for gameplay wise. I remember um, NBA live when it was still around, they had content creators actually do that. Like, Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that was cool. They, they actually had it where you load up NBA live. They had, you know how we have the main screen for updates. They had the video playing right away. Oh, yep. this is how to do so and so. It actually shows a controller on there. That'd be kind of a good way to, you know, just represent of what this like how this game plays. Yeah. And how to go about it. Um, I think that'd be kind of cool. Especially with now having our second new console this year. I mean, we had Xbox last year, now a switch this year. That'd be a great thing to have. Um, it's funny because I I've been playing MVP 06, just just um just have something different and i go there there's mvp videos and they go through each um each section what's new in the game whether because it was college baseball goes over the recruiting but still goes over the new hitting dude in mvp 06 they had analog for throwing and i'm just going to did, let you know yeah it's like analog for the meter for throwing and as you get used to it i kind of liked it I, I'm not saying I want it for 21 uh, for the show, but I'm just saying it would be kind of cool to have that little feature there because you just you don't have to press your button. It's everything's just on your right stick. So that's um, MVP 05 or 06? 06. This is oh, when they went that's to why. Yeah, 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 I never yeah, yeah, yeah. I never played 06. I only played yeah, 05. Yeah. That's so, why. Um, and let me tell you, if you play if you play MVP games and go to the show, you're not gonna have a fun time on the show. Your time <laughs> is gonna be all screwed up. Legit had a four all run. The game I matched up, this is last night. Um, I faced another 10 time BR flawless guy. I was like, oh, God. Am I, I was swinging at everything. I felt like I was just playing the game for the first time. That's how bad it was. Um, yeah. But yeah. Huh. But yeah. There's, <clears throat> but going back to gameplay stuff, um, there's lots of things to look out for. Um, and of course, if you guys have any questions about gameplay after seeing that feature, Make sure to shoot us either in the comments on this video or tweet us at Inside the Show PC on Twitter, um, and we'll discuss that for next episode. Yep. Yeah. 
Do we do we have to end on this? I don't want to. I think we do, topic. Scuff. You know what? I'll no. do, because I know this is a painful thing for you, so I'll just go ahead and take the lead. So, you know how we were, you know how we got Kirk Gibson, just a, a super exciting legend that both you and I are over the moon about. Well, Scuff, oh, your yeah. your week is most likely going to get a hell of a lot better <laughs> because MLB the show on their social medias, as they've been doing week in and week out, have teased another new legend coming into the game. Now we know it's a hitter. And it seems like it seems like the stadium this hitter is at is Citizens Bank Park. Now, if we're going off of the Kirk Gibson tease, we were able to determine that that was Dodger Stadium. So if we're going on the same logic that the stadium represents the team that the player is playing for, and we already got Ryan Howard revealed earlier in the game, it's looking very likely that this legend is going to be none other than than Mets fans' favorite, Chase Utley. Now, yeah. now we did have Chase Utley back in, uh, what was it, MLB 18. He was a career arc. I remember that. Uh, I didn't think he was all that great in the game, but it's not even about that, Scuffy. Just, I want you to tell me how, assuming it is Chase Utley, I want, I want you to tell me what your, or I want you to show me what your reaction is going to be when that reveal actually happens on Thursday. I'm just going to sit back. I want to see it. I'm not even going to talk. Don't. I won't mention his name. <laughs> Don't mention his name. I will not. He's that second baseman. He's, he's um, Voldemort. I, it will bring me back to when Matt Harvey nailed him in the back and stared him down when he walked to first base. That's what I'm looking for. And if that freaking no Syndergaard throwing over his head and not trying to hit him, but, you know, say we're here. Oh, man. It's, I, it's, it's so <laughs> bad that he lives in Mets fans' head for free. And it's never going to end. It, and he probably <laughs> loves this. Probably absolutely loves it. But we can't help it. I, I, I yeah. I want. Oh. I, I, okay. I, I think we need to do this right here, right now on the podcast, Scuffy. Hmm. The first time you oh, face was... Chase Utley in MLB 22, are you throwing at him? Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> if it's 11 0 game and he's the wall, like they pit pitch hit maybe we had like a bronze or silver flashback and the guy pitch hits and i'm supposed to lose the game 11 no i would do it <laughs> you will you will make that hard call just to i will make that just hard to call. send that message my pride as being that <laughs> fan and res respect of just you know being there for the boys aspect yeah he he's getting plunked i i mean i was about to say let's hope it doesn't end up coming down to that situation but now i kind of hope that it does because that would be, <laughs> that'd be electric that would be good content, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, Chase Utley, it's looking very likely that it's going to be it him. It does look very likely. There's other names that's been floating out there um, because of the bad news stance, like D J.D. Drew. If it's J.D. Drew, that might be. I mean, I know J.D. Drew was a all right player back in the day, but he's no. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, <laughs> think, I, I don't think anybody's <laughs> jumping out of their seat for J.D. Drew, yeah. man. Um, I did hear Mel Ott, which would probably be a good one. Um it was a throwback, very old player, um, mm -hmm. but still be better than that second baseman. Yeah. But it just, it, it looks towards it's going to be that. I, unless they have some trick up their sleeve. I, I and it, it, to be honest with you, it's for everyone else that's not a Met fan. Um, I think a lot of people are going to like having another like powerful second baseman that could hit some dingers. Um, I will say he was a good ball player. Do I have a respect for him? No. But he was a great ball player while at it. Um, now Hall of Fame. A lot, of, a lot of Philly fans think he's Hall of Fame, but I don't. Fair enough. But yeah, that's just me being a salty Met fan. That's all it is. Everybody's uh, got those players they don't like. It's okay. I know. It's true. It's true. But yeah, we'll find out on Thursday. Um, I'm hoping sooner or later they do announce right, though. I'm hoping he's back. I'm hoping, if they, too. If they yeah. get freaking Howard and Mauer back and they don't get right back, I'm going to be so Yeah, disappointed. that's going to be that's kind of whack. Not, uh -oh. not that Howard and, and Maurer aren't great, but if you're going to advertise the cover athletes, you got to get David Wright in there. Yeah. The only way I will accept David Wright not being back and maybe being back next year, I was watching, um, there was a Twitter clip on last week or a couple of days ago where it showed David Wright hitting a grand slam in the WBC. I was like, okay. It, it made me want the WBC mode in the show. And I think, next year is when they have it 
Um, so I, I assume it's going to be in the show once, whenever WBC happened. And if they show like that, that being the moment of revealing it, right? Like when he hit the grand slam against Italy down big. Okay. I forgive you, but I'm hoping he's in there. That would be awesome, man. I, I trust me. I want him in there too. I want him yeah. in there. So, but yeah, that's going pretty much to do for, Oh, one more question. Yeah. <clears throat> now seeing like the Nintendo switch feature probably could have been like, you know, it was very short. It was like 15 minutes to the point. Do you think they could use that time? I'm, I'm asking the hard questions here for franchise. Absolutely. I mean, like really, I, I, I mean, I feel like they could. I definitely think they could. However, I, I think it's totally okay for Nintendo switch to get its own feature premiere, considering yeah. it's a huge undertaking for them, adding the game to another new console. I think it's totally fine. But if that's the case, can we maybe just, why don't you just add a feature premiere? Why don't you start a week earlier? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I don't understand. Give, give for, yeah, I mean, dude, I, I'm not even, I'm we're not even going to get the it. Eyes, man. I really am. And yeah. the more I've been playing like other old games and like now I'm into MVP 06 and I'm loving it, like absolutely addicted to it. I'm like, I feel for these guys. Like if they, they were at that level for a movie show with the franchise mode for all these years and then seeing some features being taken away from them, um whether that was budgets from like 13 or 14 and then what they have now i i you know it's like at least me speechless i just feel for them that's i I feel for him too i kind of want to save that conversation for the march to october october feature i want to see if we can actually we had mills and frist last year i feel like um maybe we'll get some other perspectives for the march october i'd like to see if we could probably get like say a ant or rgs on um, and then we'll have that like 2.0, not 2.0, but another um, perspective from them too. Yeah. When um, is when is the franchise one? Or I'm sorry, the the March to October one. That's not until like three weeks. I think n- the week after is commentary, and then the week after that is presentation. I don't understand why commentary and presentation is not together, unless there's really. I mean, we saw presentation already in the tech test that there was a lot of new things, so I could see that, I guess. But commentary in one, I feel like that's gonna be like another. Nintendo Switch maybe be like 15, 30 minutes. So let's say you got something yeah. up their sleeve. I'm going to see. Uh, yeah, you're right. Next one's commentary. Then it's March to October. Then Road oh, to the March. Show. And then DD. Okay. Gotcha. They so, do March so, to October presentation together? Yeah. And March okay, to October. And, which is weird because I feel like presentation and commentary could have gone together. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there's certain presentation things that they added in March, March to October. October. Maybe something like that. So who yeah, knows? We'll see. We, we shall see, but I think that's going to do it for us. Shorter episode this week. I mean, we've been having episodes that go on more than an hour. I think it's yeah. due time that we have an episode that's a little on the short side. I'm sure next week's going to be a little bit longer because we are going to be talking about a major topic topic being gameplay. So, and like I said, if you have any questions after watching the feature, be, be sure to shoot a comment on this uh, YouTube video. If you're mm-hmm. watching on YouTube, also hit thumbs up if, if you are. Um, or tweet us at inside the show PC, um, any question you have, and we'll try to get some up and talk about it next week. But yeah, that's going to do it for us. Make sure to follow my boy Kooks at Kooks 46 on Twitter. You find all of socials there. I'm at Stuffy McGee TV. We'll catch you guys next week on inside the show.